Well, it was surging because it, it was pulling a vacuum. Yeah. Whether it, you know enough water was sloshing around, it was all very hot as a result of warming through. Always possible. Anyway, I'll go and talk to the punters. Fun. <laughs> this, um, basically an atmospheric engine. Uh, <laughs> it's not steam pressure pumping it round, it's atmospheric pressure when the steam is gone. No. The way <coughs> sorry. As far as James Watt's design was concerned, when it was working for real, yeah. which it isn't here. Uh, we are running it off load because of the age of the beam and the fact that we've now got the pump set so it would lift it a lot further than at the old museum. So we're running it off load. Now when we run it off load, if we were to pull a proper vacuum, then we would need steam at minus eight pounds per square inch. And that would mean that any air, any leaks would be air coming into the supply system and it would finish up full of air instead of steam. So what we actually do is we run it at a very small steam pressure and we try and avoid it condensing. When we started running just now, it started condensing. Um, and under those circumstances it was getting too great a force and that was why it went right over uh, and we had to stop it for a while to get the valve back. But a watt engine normally would operate with steam pressure at about three pounds per square inch um, and with pulling a good vacuum. So it was getting about 14 pounds of vacuum. So 17 pounds. And, and would you put the load on the power or on the return, the vacuum side? Uh, it would depend entirely on the configuration of the, the kit. <coughs> on this type of pumping engine, it would raise water on the power stroke as the piston goes down. If you have <coughs> a mine pumping engine with a lot of rods, then on the power stroke it would raise the rods and then the weight of the rods would raise the water when it went on the dead stroke. So it depends very much on the particular configuration that you've got. <coughs> so uh, we've got enough original parts in the engine to be concerned about trying to run it on load. Um, even the steam cylinder and the piston which is the, the most modern bit and the valve gear that's 1850. Uh, the pump is 1790. It was changed in 1790 because the summit level of the canal was lowered by three locks. So instead of raising water 40 feet, they only wanted to raise it 20 feet. So they could put a larger diameter pump. And that's the pump that went in in 1790. <coughs> it doesn't do any real pumping. The water level in the tank underneath, which is the supply for the circulating feature um, is held just below the bottom valve right. so that it never draws water up yeah. and it's got for that end uh, it's got PTFE snubbers in it on the piston. The PTFE yes. Yeah. So that uh, it's just going up and down and as smoothly as we can get it. Yes. Yeah. Because the uh, it's, the, all, it's all wear and tear, isn't oh it? Yeah. If it's not pumping. Yeah. And the more uniform the friction, the easier it is to run it off load. Uh, yeah. Because presumably, if it was on load, it's kind of more even power yeah. stroke. And any unevenness in the bore is yeah. very small compared to the weight yeah. of the water. Yes. But without the weight of the water, it picks up every bump. Yes. It, it affects many ways like a flywheel on the power yeah. stroke. Yeah. We also short stroke it, again deliberately, so that it's less likely to hit the bump stops. <laughs> I, I live um, in Melton, just up from Leicester, mm. and came down to the Abbey Pumping Station oh, yeah, down there, yeah. Victorian. Mm. Oh, yeah. Yes. It's a splendid place. Oh, yeah. Really? Yeah. Yes. The thing that, a thing that strikes me, is that the way that the Victorians seem to take something, if, it, if it's got to be there, we've got to make it work. Oh yeah, well, tremendous and municipal pride. Well yes, I mean, even though it's job 
pumpy suit. You mm. still found time to put flowers on all the things. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Like well, that, that is purely municipal pride. Yeah. The, the municipal pumping stations, uh, either for sewage or for fresh water, drinking water, uh, all the ones for water supply, uh, tend to be very ornate. Mm. Uh, they would get a good splash of the pump. <coughs> They get a good bit of publicity. Sorry, I was giving a lecture here last night. Yeah. Oh, oh drive me to that. <coughs> um, yeah. So uh, anything where uh, it was going to be this business of municipal pride, you get that level of decoration. Yeah. Uh, and when it's a, a utility item, pumping for pumping water from the canal or you know, dra canal drainage. Uh, sorry. Um, Mine drainage is more so, but even canal drainage, they tend to be a lot uh, less ornate. Oh, I didn't know that. Um, compare it with uh, Crofton, um, and a uh, nicely set up engine, but it is much more of a utility product, and that's the situation with many of the canal engines. There may be decoration on them, but it tends to be rather more superficial. You'll have uh, nice moulding in the columns, you'll have um, a paint scheme, like the hull engine with some uh, lining out on that yeah. pumping engine. But you won't get the, uh, the bits particularly. I mean, uh, Abbey Pumping Station, the engines there are a particularly good example of, yeah, of the sort of fishes and seaweed and all <laughs> the rest of it yeah. that they've gone for. And then we're going to Pumplewick as well, as a, yes. as a child. Mm -hmm. uh, it's that group in Nottingham. Yes. And that's another one with, yeah, it's pretty good look at with the yeah. big grounds and the fountain out of the back. And yeah. Like that. Well, the, the, the fountain and the lake are part of the cooling system. Yeah. Um, on, the, on those ones. But, but if it has to be there, it has to be new Oh, yeah. Yes. Whereas engines like this one use the canal water. And we used it can for canal water at the previous museum when we first had it operated. But after a while, it gets a bit smelly the building. <laughs> so we, uh, we cut down on that and we went over to uh, simply uh, recirculating the water because there's a big enough, at that place, there's a big enough quantity of water yeah. to simply recirculate at the time we ran. Uh, when we came here, there was no guarantee that we could have that situation. Uh, much smaller quantity, and so here we've got some chillers on the roof, uh, dedicated to keeping the cooling supply chilled. Would really non-compressed air be an option for these? Um, it would. The problem with compressed air uh, for the higher performance engines is getting the lubricant through. Uh, the steam oil is configured to be injected into the steam yeah. and to go through and lubricate the thing. I mean, we don't really rely on it, but it's a steam oil injector up the air. But that's just dripping a bit through. Uh, as you go to uh, engines like that one uh, and the one behind you, there will be a lubricator pump, and that will be putting uh, steam oil into steam right. to lubricate that bit, and then you'll have a separate arrangement, usually with these little sight glasses. You can see them on the crankshaft yeah. there, yeah. Uh, which have normal, normal oil. Yeah. For I didn't know about the steam oil, the steam oh, yeah. carrying the oil in. Yeah. In a two-stroke kind of way. Right? Yeah. And the problem with that, of course, is that you can't easily recycle the water. And you have to, if you're going to use the water out of that, and that's why we don't uh, recycle the water that comes out of these engines, because there are, there's enough oil contamination that if you do that and put it back into your boiler, it will, it will foul up the boiler. So, the joy of... I should be my family. Thank you very much. That's okay. Thank you.